Hey guys and welcome to Django Fundamentals. In this tutorial I will talk a little bit about how the different parts of Django are connected and how they are working. So let's begin with what is Django actually. Django is a web framework based on Python which simplifies web development by providing tools and structure we need for building efficiently and reliable web applications. When it comes to different web frameworks, they usually follow an architectural pattern called Model View Controller or MVC. Django also does this, but Django calls it Model View Template or MVT. When we are building a web application using Django, we need a Django project. You can think of this as a skeleton. It usually exists of multiple apps with some files with different functionalities and features. And these are what I want to talk about in this video. Let's say that we have an app. This can be an app for a blog, a cart in an e-commerce website or similar. All apps comes with a few different files when we create them. And this is what all of them do. Apps.py. The apps.py is sort of a configuration file for this specific app. You can specify things like the app name, the admin label and similar. Tests.py. The tests.py is a file where you can write automatic tests for testing our models, views and similar to make sure that everything is working. Models.py The models.py is where you create Python classes for defining the structure and behavior of database tables. Django uses an ORM layer which makes it easy to interact with the database. So when you are defining a database model you set up the fields you want to store, what type of data you want to have, and similar. Here you can see an example of a typical Django model. First we import models from Django.db, which tells Django that we are going to use this functionality. Below here we define the class, just like a Python class, where we pass in models.model. Then we specify the fields that we want to have in the database. Here we have it title which is a char field which is typically used for short uh, sentences then we have the body which is a text field which is more typical for long texts and then we have the created that which is a date time field which is to keep track of when this post was added to the database there are many other fields type you can use as well Below here, we specify something called the class meta and set the ordering at minus created at. This is to set the default ordering for this model. You can specify other fields here as well if you want that. Below there again, we specify the string representation of this class and return the title of this post, which means that when you are in the admin panel and similar, it's much easier to understand which post you are using. Below the string representation, you can also create other uh, model functions as well, if you want to do that. Views.py A view can either be based on a Python function or a class. These are used to handle requests and return responses that the user can see. And inside the view you typically get or insert data with, uh, into the database and then you return the contents of the template to the browser. So here you can see a typical Django view. First we just import a render, which is a shortcut from Django that we use to render HTML to the browser. On the line below we are importing the model we have for this app. Here specifically we have a model called post. Then below there again we define a new view called index where we pass in the request parameter. This request parameter is mandatory to have here and this includes information about the browser, which URL you are on, uh, if it's a GET or POST request and similar. Then we use the POST model to get all of the objects from the database and assign them to a variable called POST. Below there again we use the return statement in the function to return the render object or function where we again pass in the request parameter so that the template has this information as well. Then we specify which template we want to render and then we just pass in a dictionary with the information. Here we pass in the posts, which now will be available to be used in the template. URLs.py Inside the URLs.py file we've defined routes or URLs and map them to a specific view so that 
Django knows which view you want to render based on the URL you are on. Here you can see a typical example of a simple URLs file. First you just import path from Django URLs so that we can use this function. And then we import the views file in the app we are in. We want to have a separate URLs file for each app in our projects. Then we set up the URL patterns which is the list of all views or pages that we have in this specific app. First we have a path which is empty which is usually the front page which links to views.posts which is a view and then we set the name so it's easier to reference this URL or path different places in the project. Below here you can see how we can make a URL dynamic by specifying that here we are expecting an integer called pk. This will then be a part of the parameter of a view. Admin.py The last file is the admin.py file. This is used to register models with a built-in admin interface. You can also configure how they are shown, add filters, search functionality and similar. And then here we can see a very simple example of an admin.py file. Here we import admin from django.contrib so that we can register models with the admin interface. And then we import the post model that we have in this app. And then we just say admin.site.register and pass in the model which here is post. So the flow for Django is something like this. A user enters the website. Django uses the urls.py to find which page or view to show. And when a view is loaded, that typically interacts with the database for pulling information, etc. And then the view is also used to load and render a template with the information from the database. And that's basically how Django works in a nutshell.